Okay, I put a couple files up there. You don't need them, but they're kind of cool. That's why I put them up there. Uh, I want to check out flowers here. This uses the easy graph. Remember how we had the problem with easy graphics? Does it? Well, it does not come with Python. That's why some of you had to download it. Well, all of the computers in the lab should have had it on it, but I, didn't a couple of you not have it? So I told them, like, really? They should have been on it, but it wasn't. Oops. But yeah. Let's look at flowers. This is kind of cool. Okay. Oh. Isn't that pretty? Uh. <laughs> Come on now. You've got to admit, that's pretty. See, watch. Whoa. Oh, that is cool. Wow. That is cool. That's crazy. Is that randomized? I don't know. I actually haven't even looked at this code yet. <laughs> yeah, it is. It's randomized. Yeah. So that's flowers. Kind of cool. Um, now let's go to circles. This draws circles forever, basically, <laughs> which is kind of cool. And it'll keep going to the next one. Future. Okay, I'm stopping that one. And circles output is actually that one is done. Or that one, depending on which one you run. Now, let me look at Jairus circles. That's crazy. That cool. Now, Python. This I was written in Python. There's something called threading. I don't know if you ever heard of threading. Mm -hmm. Threading is you can make it start the program and make it do four things at one time. This program does not do threading. How do you think it's doing that? Does it look like it's doing four at a time? No. Kind of. Maybe. It's not. It's actually doing one. But down in my office, it looks like it's doing four at a time because I have a much better. Hey, it's actually doing one at a time. So. But I put these up there because who knows, maybe you guys want to play with them and not required at all. But they are there, so you can download them if you want. Okay. That's crazy. Okay, not required. I just thought they were kind of cool, especially the flowers. When you look at that code, it's like, whoa, I didn't even expect that from that code. All right, we need to pick up on 65. Whatever. Zoom in a little. Okay. Wait, we need 65. 65. 65. Okay. Boolean and variables and operators. Okay. Boolean is true or false. That's it. That's all you get with Boolean. Okay. On or off, true or false, okay? Yes or no, that kind of stuff. It's called a flag, but it's either is or isn't, okay? It's kind of like binary, it's either one or zero, okay? It's a data type in Python, it's called Boolean with a small b, okay? And you can say failed is equal to true or false or whatever. It can be true or false and that's it. Now, with Boolean, you can do some operations on there. You can do and or or, okay? So, is the day Tuesday and, you know, whatever, or is it Wednesday at 1230, you know, you can, and or or. We're going to talk more about that in a minute, okay? So, and or or. So, if the criteria was Monday and 1230. So, if it was Monday and it's 1230, you should be in class. So, that would work? So, both would have to be true for the entire statement to be true. So statement is you need to be in class, would have to be Monday and 12.30, okay. Now we could also do an or, that would be if it's Monday or Wednesday and 12.30. So you see I can put them all together. So here it says if temperature is greater than zero and temperature is less than 100. There's something about that statement a lot of people get wrong. You cannot say if temperature is greater than zero and less than 100. Can't do that. Because the less than 100 doesn't know what you're referring to. So many people do that. I don't know why it won't work, because you got to include temp on the other side as well. So if it's greater than 100 and less, I'm sorry, greater than zero and less than 100, it's liquid, okay? 
Now, working with ands, so if A and B are both true, the answer is true, okay? If A is true and B is false, which is obviously false. If A is false and B is true, the answer is false. And if they're both false, obviously the answer is false, okay? So far, so good. We use this a bunch in cybersecurity and programming and all kinds of stuff. So now let's talk about or. So if the temperature is less than zero or temperature is greater than 100, we can say it's not liquid. Make sense? So if it's negative 50, it's liquid. But if it is regular 50, it does not meet the criteria. So one or the other needs to be true for it to be true now. Okay. So if it's Monday or Wednesday, either one can be true, and it's 1230. So Monday or Wednesday, one of those would need to be true, and the time would need to be 1230 previous class. Okay. So if A and B are true, the answer is true. If A is true and B is false, the answer is still true. If A is false and B is true, the answer is still true. If they're both false, the answer is false. There's a lot more involved in this. There's XOR, there's NOR, there's a whole bunch of other ones as well, but we're just not covering them yet. Okay. That's also not. Okay. If not attending or grade is less than 60, drop the class. So I guess whenever November comes around, the last day to drop, you all could use this. If I'm no longer attending class or my grade is less than 60, I could drop. I should drop. Why would that be an and? Anybody? Why would an and not work for there? Because if either one is true, you do it. Right. With an or, if either one is true, you do it. But why would it not work successfully with an and? Because if one is true, the other one isn't, then it wouldn't count. Right. So maybe you're attending, you're but you got a crappy grade, so you still want to drop. So that's why an or is better in this case, okay? Now, if attending and not grade less than 60, not reverses it. So what you do is you look at that and say, is my grade less than 60? And whatever the answer is, reverse it. So it's that whole not thing. Why would you not just uh, do well if you're greater than 60? You could, you could. But there's a lot of times, you know, I, uh, you got to do these stupid training things each semester. I think this time was alcohol abuse, I don't know, drug abuse, uh, different training things of our job. And I basically hit play on the video and I could do something else, come back two hours later and go take the test. Whoops, I can't say that, but oh, but um, <laughs> it was on the test, gotcha. they got me on one of them. I was like, darn it, they threw a knot in there. Come on, you've seen tests like that. You know, there's a, there's a, there's a knot in the sentence. I was like, oh, man, I didn't even catch that. It throws you off. So, yeah, but knots are very handy. And obviously, your answer is correct. We could have just done the less and the greater and be done with it. But, you know, it's just not always done that way. So. If, you're, if you are using not, try to use simple or simple or logic. Now, what they're telling you on this last one is try not to use not because sometimes not get confusing, especially like when you have a not and a not and a, you know, that whole double negative. So, I'm not not going to class. So, what's that mean? I'm going to class. It means I'm going to class. But it's stupid the way you know to say it like that. But sometimes people do. And you gotta really listen. Right. Wait a minute, that was a double negative. So yeah, you've probably seen that somewhere in your life. Okay. So A is true, so not A would be false. A is false, not A would be true. Simple enough. Have I got that? Pretty basic stuff so far. Okay, not operator, inequality. Here we use the explanation, the explanation, explanation. Exclamation. 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 Not explanation. Exclamation. Whatever. Whatever. Either one. <laughs> Whichever one is correct. So I'll use the or statement. Either explanation or exclamation. That's what we use <coughs> not. Okay. 
So a slightly dated operator is used for the not when checking for inequality rather than negation. So we can use not to negate something, but we want to see if something's equal. Well, that's the difference in here. Does Python let you do triple um, triple equal and and or um, do double not think equals so. with a not? You know, so you can compare like string literals to make sure that everything's capitalized the exact same way, so it's not just comparing values in memory. I you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I know what you're saying. So I like you do it, you do an explanation equal equal to compare right. to make sure that it's I don't think it supports it. Okay. I'm pretty sure it doesn't because I think I've read something about that recently on that. So um, you know what he's saying is I mean different languages have different things. And it's kind of like you know if you learn Java and you learn C you should be fine in C sharp because C sharp is kind of the mixture of Java and VB and C all together. So you know they're all different. So Whichever one you want, just you have to learn inconsistencies of it. Okay, so the flow chart. It's often called range checking. So if temperature is greater than zero, true, is it less than 100? Then both conditions are true, okay, or else false. See how that works? So that'll be a flow chart for a little statement right there. I assume that's degree Celsius. Yes. Yeah, so it happens. Now, you could on flowchart write both of them in one. A lot of people do, which is totally acceptable as well. So, all right. Or we could do this. Now, there's our or statement. So, temperature is less than or equal to zero. If it's false. Temperature is greater than 100. If that's true, you know, so you can go either way with that one as well. That's an or. All right. Comparison. Did I give us comparison? I can't remember if I did. Where did I put those? That, um, that's in three. Did I give you all a comparison? It's not on the website to download. No. Oh, yeah. downloads compared to download. Is it up there? Aha, yeah. uh -huh. it is up there. A lie. It's right underneath there. Okay, there it is. This is in section seven. We're going to open up compare two real quick. Okay, first of all, let's see what it does. We always just need to see what it does before we look at it. That makes sense, doesn't it? Enter a number, so just look to 3.8. Enter a second number, 2.4. The first number is larger, the numbers have the same sign. Kind of cool. Okay. So what it did is it compared the two numbers. So now let's look at the code, see what it actually did. Okay, so I entered a number, they were the same, we're done. So this is actually kind of the layout you're gonna use for your homework assignment. If it's less than three, you're done. That kind of stuff. So, okay, so here they are the same. We print out they're the same. Else, which means there are no, they're not the same. If x is greater than y, in other words, the first number is greater than the second, so the first number is larger. Else, we print out the smallest. So why don't we have to say else if x is less than y? So we said if x. Why wouldn't I say this? Oops, not seven one. Why would I say that instead? So that's what I just put. Why did they just put an else? Which one's better? Well, it would be down to Both can write, but it would with an else as well. Because they're not in it. The else and LF both continue down to the if statements. Because we're really, x, if it's x and greater than y, if it's not greater than y, I mean, it's got to be less than. Mm -hmm. So why, why ask the question if it's less than? Because if it's not greater than, only it has to be less than, because we've already checked for equality. See that? Mm -hmm. So sometimes you want to make your code too complex because, I mean, they've already checked for if they're equal. They've already checked for if it's greater than. So what's our only other option? Less than. So why ask the question? So if it's not equal, it's not greater than, it's obviously less than. So don't bother putting this just another step. You know what I mean? Okay. Then we're saying if 0.01 is less than x, 
and you know, minus one, and x minus one. So now we're checking to see if they're close together, which is kind of cool. In other words, if the distance between them is 0 0.01 across, wow, that's more than I expected them to do, okay? Then if I say if they're equal to one, so if x equals y plus one, or x equals y minus one, they're only one apart, let's test that. So we'll put in 3.2, 2.2. Okay, so they're one apart and have the same sign. The first number is larger. Nice. Oh, make sure on the all stuff, it really only prints out one word. So it should meet multiple criteria. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. When adding an ing, you can't you know, remove the last letter, add an ing, and remove something else and do something, you know, whatever. One print statement is all you get. I mean, it's only going to print one time. Is what I'm saying. Okay? So it prints at one of those criteria, or that's it. It doesn't print like this one does. This one's printing on multiple. Okay. The reason it's printing on multiple is because now we got that one, but then the rest of them, you notice they're all even. They're not indented from each other. So it could technically print one of these two here, and then it could print whatever meets the criteria here. Easy enough? Could have made it through differently, but that's what they decide. So that's compare. All right. Boolean operators. So if x is less than 200 and x is less than 100, okay, the value would be false. So pretty much here, you know, and they're just showing you examples of ands and or. That's all they're showing. Okay. Ands and or are pretty simple. Oh, they're also showing not. Just um, I don't know, these tables are kind of good for when you're looking at stuff. Okay. I would recommend you keep track of those. Okay, confusing and an or. So it says a surprising common error to confuse them. Yeah, I've seen that a lot. If a value lies between zero and 100, if it is at least zero and at most 100, if it lies outside the range, it is at least zero or greater than 100. Wait, let's read that one again. Hold on. Surprising common error. Okay. A value lies between zero and 100. So if it, if it is both between those two, it's at least zero and at most 100. Makes sense. And if it's outside of that, it could be either or. Yeah, it could be either or, right. So if it's outside that range, it could be either one. So, okay. All right, here's another example. Now, let's talk about short circuit for a second. Okay. The left half of an and equation is false. Why look further? Okay. So if I gave you the question, if it's Monday and 12.30, you should be in class, okay? So what if you looked and it was Tuesday? Would you still have to check if it's 12.30? So why would you? So with an and statement, the moment it reaches a single false, it just quits. Now, I don't think you can do it in, in this, but I know in Java you can override that and force it to check both sides. So why would you check both sides? In Java. I mean, so no both answers. Well, but what if it, I mean, we're really just going to do one thing, like to be in class or not, it shouldn't matter. If you're doing more than one thing, really, it's really fine. Right. Well, it defaults to short circuit evaluation. The moment it reaches a fault, it quits. Okay. But if I was developing something, maybe launching a rocket or something to keep someone alive, I don't know, I might want to check both. You know, I just, something to me says, you know, I want to be really safe on this. But technically, I wouldn't need to be. Because if it's not Monday, why the heck are you in class? You know what I mean? So, all right. Okay, short circuit. If the left half is true, then why look at the rest? So remember, with an or, either one of them is true. It's true. So either the left can be true or the right. So if the left is true, why look at the right? So if you got to be in class Monday or Wednesday, if you look and see it's Monday, we don't care what time it is. No, because you do. 
is just the portion of what data go to class. So, okay. so short circuit evaluation, it just does it, and you're probably always going to use it. <coughs> I've never written one without it. Again, I've never really thought about it all that much. Okay. De Morgan's Law. This one's a little confusing to understand. It tells you how to negate and and or. So, not A and B. So we got not, and we got A and B in parentheses. Okay. Is that the same as A and, or not A and not B, or not A or not B? You gotta think about that for a second. I'm just telling you what it is. So not A and not B is not an and statement. Okay. So not A or not B is false. So it's just this is the Morgan's law. It's kind of weird. Not A or not B is the same as saying not A and not. How would you apply that? I don't know. I, I, I probably wouldn't. So shipping is higher in Alaska. I've literally never had to use that. Okay. The country is not the United States, and the state the state is not Alaska, and the state is not Hawaii at shipping charges of twenty dollars. Now, if not countries, it's just so it just makes you stop from having to put uh, not equal to right. So what you need to do, whenever you're working with nots and ands, just think about it very carefully because you can very easily make a mistake on this. So like on yours, if the last letter is a BGP and the second to last letter is not a BGP, so you have to think about that. And I highly recommend you pick words that meet all the criteria to test sense because you want to get it right because you're gonna to have to have some ands and some whatever's in there all right now let's talk about strings we're almost at the end here okay okay the in operator in is wow helpful okay what if you want to check if something is in something else for instance and they got an example your name is John Wayne Wayne in name or way in name would be true because W-A-Y is in name. Okay. I signed a project to my students and so many of them messed up on it. I told them to, and I, y'all know what IP address is? Mm -hmm. well, I'll just, some of you might, I'll just say a number, okay? So I told you to take a bunch of numbers and only print out or only add whatever, not, I want non-duplicates in other words, okay? So you get a number and you put it into a list. We're gonna cover lists. Then you get the second number, you need to check and see if it's already in the list before you add it. So what you could do, if not in the list name, that's how you can do it. Because the, the in is very handy. So when working with numbers, you can add the numbers to a list, then you can go right through there and say if the next number, not in, so it, what it does is it looks through the list and it's not in the list, it adds it to it. Pretty simple, okay? But not in and in, very handy. I use them quite frequently. I use them many times in that cryptography. So program. if you gave it a duplicate, would it give you an error? No, you just don't add it. It just doesn't add it. You just say, list. if whatever the number is, not in the list name, then add it. Mm -hmm. But you don't need to do anything else, I just skip it. If we got another address, I just say, I only add the new ones. Okay. You start with an empty list, so it works quite easily. Okay, suffixes. Okay, so suppose you want to give the name of a file that ends to ensure that it has the correct extension. So ends with, technically could use that as well. I mean, I think it would be easier just to check the minus one or the minus two or the whatever, but you could use ends with. That's another way to check something to see, you know, the means. Okay, it's applied to the string, store the file name. So what it's checking is this thing here wants to know if this string right there is at the end of that file. So if it's at the beginning of the file, it's going to be false. 
I remember, we talked about this last time, but if statements always return true or false, that's it. They don't return a five or anything else, true or false. So it's checking if the end of the file includes .html, it does or return true. Okay, easy enough there. All right. Okay, substrings. Substrings are handy for, you know, getting portions of a string. I use them quite a bit as well. So you can also count strings, you can use end with, you can use a find. You want to find this thing in the string and it will return the lowest index of a string. So in other words, if I gave you the name Ken and I was looking for an E and I used find, it would return a one. I'll get that. Because K, E, N is three letters. K is zero, E is one. So if I asked you to look for an E, it will be looking for, actually, let's do that one. Let's do that one. All right, so we're going to play with find here. We'll do name equals Ken. <laughs> okay, now we're going to do name.find. Oops, and it returns a one. And that's the first instance of an E in my name. But what if I look for a D? Got to click here, bring it back down. I'm going to try a D. Oops, not D, -E, just a D. Get a negative one. What the heck? Okay. Means it doesn't exist. Does not find it, you don't get a zero. Why don't you get a zero? Because the first letter is Except the first letter is zero. <laughs> so I mean obviously you can't get a zero. So you gotta return something other than that. So it returns a negative one. Now what if my name was Kenneth? Oh. Gotta click up there and bring it down there. Now I want to find the E again. So what's it gonna return this time? I'm going to turn a one or a four. 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 Return a one because find returns the first instance, right? Okay. And just like ends with, we also have starts with. Work the same way. Returns true or false. All right. Is L num returns true if the string consists of only <laughs> letters or digits? In cryptography, you'll be writing a program if you take that course where you have to check if it's a letter. That would not be a good one to use because that's letters and numbers. Is alpha only checks the letters? Is digit only checks the numbers? And maybe you're asking for someone to enter <coughs> the zip code. Actually, that wouldn't be a good example. I know uh, the year they were born check with is digit because obviously it should all be numbers at that point. All right there's also is lower, is space, is upper, there's all kinds of these things that return you know true or false. Is it an uppercase letter? Is it a lowercase letter? Um, is it a space? There's a whole bunch of them there. Okay, an example. There's more. <clears throat> okay, we're not going to walk through this example because I didn't put it up there. I did, we're not going to walk through it anyway. Now let's talk about input validation for just a second. Okay. I love how they start this. Accepting user input is dangerous. Mm -hmm. It's always dangerous whenever people are involved. I mean, you don't know what they're going to enter. So about everybody in here at one point or another had to put in something wrong. You know, I got a new access to a website yesterday for school, and they sent me an email with my username and my password. I must have tried 20 times. I'm like, what the heck? I said, I know I'm typing it right. So input validation, I knew I was doing it right. So I emailed the company, I'm like, I'm sorry, I know you just sent this to me, but it doesn't work. They're like, oh, we, I have multiple emails. We put in your other email. Then why did you tell me you use this one? So I teach for OK State as well. So they told me they use ken.doe at OK State.edu. So 
but I tried. So I, oh, we put in your rose address. So why don't you tell me you put in the other one? That's probably crazy. Okay. So consider the elevator program. Okay. Assume that we have buttons labeled 1 through 20, but not 13. Okay. If the floor is equal to 13, eh, there's no 13th floor. Okay. If it's less than 0 or greater than 20, it must enter between 0 and 20. Anything you can do when writing a program really helps. It's called error checking. You don't want, uh, what happens if I put an A in your program? Or a B, or a star, or a space? What's it gonna do? Should give you an error. Should, <laughs> no. What if it didn't give an error? Who knows what the heck would happen? So, you know, it's crazy stuff. So, it's always a good idea to check it. And I will tell you, testing is tough. The input validation is tougher as well, because there's always somebody who's gonna try it a different way. Always somebody. Like, okay, they're announcing the new whatever, iOS today. You know, once it's fully out, everybody's going to be trying everything possible to see if they can break it. So they're going to try everything other than what they're supposed to do. Okay. Break your phone. They do it all the time. And I always love the videos, the people get the new phones. What's one of the first videos you always see? Drop test. The drop test. Yes, I'm going to drop it from a 20 story building. I'm going to throw it. Dude, you just bought a $1,000 phone, but maybe they'll make enough money on the video, which they probably are. It's, it's crazy. It's like. The lowering prices today. The lowering prices of the current X10. That is X. Oh, wow. Nice. Yeah, because they probably lowered the wages from 20 cents an hour to 10 cents an hour. I don't know. I read a book called The X10. Was it the iPhone? I don't remember the name of the book, but it was about the iPhone. And it's about China. It's like, you know, actually, it was on the news yesterday about how the president wants Apple to bring development back to the United States. Oh, yeah. Won't happen. We sure we pay too much. I mean, what do y'all? What's the minimum wage here? Seven and a quarter. Yeah. 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 Would you work for twenty cents an hour, maybe fifty cents, or even a dollar an hour? No. But they do over there. Actually, China's one of the more expensive places. I had it. Yeah, there was a yeah, there was cheaper ones. Indonesia, Philippines, yeah. and uh, what's also I know it's not like exactly one to one or whatever, but isn't it also kind of cheaper to live over there? It is. It's though, and they're still getting paid a lot less than they should. Right. And and it's the working conditions. I mean, they work 12 hours a day for 20 days in a row. And in the book they were talking about when they made a change right at the last minute to whatever phone it was, they contacted the factory. And even though the people just got off work two hours earlier, they all had to appear and work 20 hours straight to get this fixed up. Can you imagine that happening in the United States? So what happened? Be a <laughs> yeah, there'll be a strike and who knows what. Okay, so there's always two. I'm not going to walk through that one either. Okay, so that's just you're welcome to walk through these. They are all available on the Wiley site. Just search for this book, go to student download and all of it. It's called Source. I just put some of them up there that are, I mean, oh, if think about it, is a lot of the programs I'm making you do, there's examples in here, which means they're all up there, which you can download and get. Okay, that's the end of chapter three. Kind of an important chapter. Okay, it's definitely an important chapter, especially the, you know, the ifs, the else's, that kind of stuff. Boolean. And Boolean. Yes. Any questions on anything on this chapter? Can we go? You're welcome to go if you'd like. Okay, no questions, you're free to go. A little bit early. What sucks is I can't go watch it now because they don't post it until it's over. So it sucks. It's still going. It's still